Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hit or Die podcast with your hosts Jake Saldotti and Chad Rothford and one of our best guests and always a great one to have, Marcus Walden. He's back from uh, just finished up a AAA with the Mariners. Yep. Uh, welcome back. Thank you boys for having me. I appreciate welcome it. Welcome home. That's yeah. right. Home is always where it is. So what they don't know is this fool made that drive the day the season ended. I was out of there, man. I had to come home and see the kids. My started wife. back so Needed. sunday was the last day sunday yeah sunday we had a 1 30 game game ended at 4 30 and i was on the road at like 4 45 i was packed up ready to go <laughs> and home monday and i was home monday by like about one o'clock in the afternoon and I then golfing early. tuesday oh yeah golfing with cash brought cash out there my son and go hit the links love it yeah. uh it's uh it's playoff baseball uh, yesterday, Tuesday, today's Wednesday, uh, the wild card started. Um, Sunday was the end of the regular season, and we got to, uh, or we said goodbye to Miggy. Uh, Miguel Cabrera is retiring. Brandon Crawford got a little ovation. I We kind of talked about it. We know Wainwright was retiring, so mm-hmm. there's two for sure. Uh, Terry Francona ended up announcing that he is done as, uh, also with the Guardians. And, uh, again, Crawford got an ovation in San Francisco where you kind of question. I think it's stupid. Like, if the guy didn't, he's not done. I don't know. Like, I hate, I get he's not going to be a giant. Okay, great. But, like, the way they acted, it was like his career's over. Like, okay, I mean, he could retire if he, exactly. I, mean, I mean, he could do, he could retire. He could yeah. walk away from the game if yeah. he wanted yeah. to. Yeah. And he had a, a great career. Um, but, I mean, there was a lot of guys like that. Grinky, same way. Uh, Joey Votto, same mm-hmm. way. Yep. Um, I mean, and you can't. I mean, Votto. You can't see Votto in another uniform. No, and he got ejected. Right? What a way to go out! (laughs) Yeah, but can you imagine him in another uni? Like, I don't think he would want to be. No, I I mean, he should have got traded eight years ago if he was if he to in my yeah yeah, to a contender. Right, right. And he signed that deal. um, And I mean, he's like Cincinnati born and bred, man. That dude, it's been with that organization the whole time. Yeah, you love to see that kind of stuff. Uh, Granky too, like Mm -hmm. twenty plus years in the show and kind of a journeyman the last handful good journeyman um and then terry francona longtime manager also player uh you were with we talked about this yeah, briefly we talked about this a little bit but no i never got to play for terry um obviously i wish i would have i got with the red sox in 2017 was my first year and john farrell was there um 16 and 17 i believe francona his last year was either 14 or 15 i forget which one it was um, but i played for farrell and then in the minor leagues, I was in camp with them in 17 and then played for Cora. Um, also, and we forgot to mention this last week, uh, legend, Hall of Famer, Brooks Robinson with the Baltimore Orioles had passed away. I forget how old he was. Um, and then last week, uh, which got a big response uh, and very fitting, was uh, Tim Wakefield. Man, that one, that one was, that one hurt. Man, Boston, was, and we haven't talked about no, we this, haven't. and so kind of saved it. Um, you know, I, I'm sure he was a presence around. Bro, he was there every spring training. He was there well, he, he worked for, was it any the uh, new Nessun. sports? Yeah, yeah Nesson. Um, he was there, and he was there. I mean, he would be in the clubhouse. He'd talk to guys. And obviously, we had Stephen Wright with us that year in 19. So we had another knuckleballer, probably the last knuckleballer that I've really seen. Um, and so Wake would always play catch with him. He was there. He's always ready to play catch. I mean, that guy was anything that you wanted. You just had to ask him, and he was there for you. He was awesome. Any uh, any personal interactions, you guys? I mean, a little bit, but nothing. I got to play golf with him a couple times. I played with him in Veritech out at Veritech's place um, called Black Rock, which was pretty cool. I mean, that guy can swing swing the sticks as well. He was obviously a pitcher, knuckleballer, crafty guy. He uh, he played a lot of golf. Yeah, it's, uh, I always liked him, man. I know there was. Uh, Did lost- you see some of his records? With I didn't. Stuff? No, I didn't. Like he's the most career wins. Yeah. Most like career appearance, like most starts or something. Like it was crazy to think in the history of the Red Sox, he's either number one or in the top three of yeah, almost three, every starting pitcher. Almost category. everything. I mean, Even strikeouts. Yeah. He yeah. was there for a while. He was on the back end of the, bull, of the bullpen and he started for a long time. Um, but I mean, he was again, he was with the Boston for I mean, 30, 35 years. I didn't know that. Especially yeah. wins. Uh, we are. We got a game starting right now, huh? We got was this Brewers, Rangers, no, Rangers, Rangers, oh, Rangers, Tampa, Rangers, Rays, yeah. Rangers got the win on the road last night. That uh, was a the Rays did not look very good last. No, night. No, they didn't actually. Pretty uh, honestly, there was a few games where I saw some 
some poor defense, uh, especially for the playoffs, and then some great plays. We'll get into it. Um, also, so Thursday we put out a podcast, Chad and I. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chad made the comment of congrats to the Giants for getting rid of uh, Boots, Bruce Bochy. <laughs> and literally the next day, they announced that Gabe Capital will not be returning to the Giants as the manager. And uh, thoughts now that it's... Well, I'm glad they listened to my email. <laughs> literally the next day. <laughs> next day after we posted the clip. My thoughts are, okay, I think it's deserved. I, I don't think he's needs to be there anymore, but... Why don't you just wait three days? Like, I just, I don't get, I hate that. Like, and he still had another year on his contract, I believe. So I, I, believe it, so. I don't know why. But I mean, just let him finish three days into the season. It's because then you put everybody who's saying the Kanoa, the interim, the, the bench coach, and I've heard nothing but bad things about him. I have no clue. So I, I don't know. I just feel like you should just let him take the three days and especially with the Crawford thing coming up and like, you know, I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm, he shouldn't be the manager there, but the way that they did it, it's like the A-Rex thing. Like, just let him finish the season. Like, he at least deserves that, I think. you know. Yeah, I wonder if there was something so. contractual in there, though. Like, did he reach a certain but amount of wins? If he finishes the season, he's guaranteed to be Are, next yeah, year. I don't maybe. know. Yeah. Yeah. And who? that's that's all the behind-the-scenes stuff, and it's all contract stuff. But, yeah, I mean, I would rather it see at the very end of the year um, that, that – I don't like it personally. That's a good point too. Like with Crawford and, you know, you've invested a couple of years into these guys. Like, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Wouldn't he want to be the guy? Again, it's a business. They don't care about how you feel. You know what I mean? That's just how it goes. It's kind of, you know, we'll see who they move on to. Um, I, there's, I don't know. I've heard some good names though. Like Mark DeRosa. uh, I still think Mark DeRosa is going to be the best manager. I think so. He's going to be one of the better managers. I mean, he did it in the world of baseball classic with Mm -hmm. team USA. He can manage the big personalities, and that's when if the Giants want to be good, they're going to have to bring in some of those big personalities. They tried to get Judge over the last offseason, um, but they got to go after some guys like that. They have the money, they have the fan base, and they have the market. It's just are they going to go and, and push and try to go and compete against the Dodgers, the Padres? Um, I mean, even Arizona's playing really, really yeah. well. Mm-hmm. They're going to be good for the next couple of years. Um, I mean, they're. I don't think they have too many older guys. I mean, I know their bullpen guy, Seawald, we traded from the Mariners. But, I mean, like, Kalen Marte is one of their older guys, a veteran player. But I don't even – he's not 28, 29 years old, I don't mm-hmm. believe. Um, but that's – they're, they're going to be a good team for a while. Christian Walker, another big bat. I in think that or, Bannister uh, is a manager or an assistant was on a list. there. Yeah. I don't know. He's been on hit or die. Love Jeff Bannister. Shout mm-hmm. out. Uh, somebody else said Bob Melvin maybe. Could that be. was on a list I saw. Yeah. Uh, I thought about like Dodgers uh, prior, the pitching coach. Is it time for him to get out from underneath and maybe? I feel like he's doing a pretty good job. I do that. too. <laughs> I know some people talking to, to my buddy Jeff, the Giants fan, uh, doesn't want to see Matheny, Girardi, uh, and now Buck Show Walters gone yeah, with, with New mouth. York. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather see a new face. I think, I think, yeah, I, guy, I agree. I think you get a guy like how Kevin Cash walked into the game. Um, you get you get a new face and, and it's a little bit of the new era of baseball where the guys that retired in 2010 2012 like a Mark DeRosa well and he was a, you know a giant too yeah. for a minute so I think and I think he's made, he's he's kind of adapted to the both oh for sure you he's know? he's got both he's still sides. old school but he has adapted to a lot of the new school stuff too yeah and obviously coaching the World Baseball Classic and what they did I mean you got to think that he did some kind of managerial. And, it's not yeah. like he's away from the game. He's been in the game the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um, but he'd be another guy that pretty much walked right, walks right into a big league coaching job, which is kind of hard, you know, to go from off the field, being in the anal- or the uh, being on TV to walking into the big leagues is a little bit different than walking into like double A, triple A, managing and get, getting your feet wet and putting the baseball pants back on is something different. I was thinking like was Ron Washington get another shot? Maybe. I, think, I don't think. I this. also think he likes what he's doing. Yeah, I think you know he he's. He's isolated the infield work, which he's one of the best infield coaches I've ever heard of. Um, and then being able – he was coaching third base there for a while. But I think he he likes what he's doing also. He's in a good organization. They're winning. It's a uh, – I think that's kind of – He doesn't people, have to deal with the spotlight either. Yeah, you don't you don't got to deal with the headaches, but you get to have the fun and you get to be more relaxed. And I think as, as a lot of these guys are playing through their career, into the coaching career, it's how do you get to enjoy really what you're doing. And managing is a tough – tough thing to do man you got a lot of things going on and you're busy for 10 and a half 11 months a year yeah it, uh, it's interesting we'll see we'll see how that plays out um the other thing i was you know i was telling chad earlier on that last episode i, I might have jinxed 
uh, the Texas Rangers. Uh, we were we were praising Bruce Bochy at Bruce Bochy as we should. Great season last. I don't know if they finished last last year, but towards the bottom of the pack uh, to potentially winning the division. And Friday they had a two and a half game lead with three to play, and they went two and one. And the Astros won three straight over Arizona to win the division on Sunday. I think it was. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, my bad. <laughs> Text. Although they, I think they lost a one-run game or two one-run games to Seattle, so yeah, they did. Uh, you know, that's and that uh, Kirby actually threw out the knuckleball for Tim Wakefield. That yeah, was pretty I cool. Saw, I that saw that. Hey, cool. that shit was nasty. Yes, he yeah. needs to keep. He needs that. to throw three or four games. So in, in the opinion. seventh, and you're at ninety-six pitches, and you instead of wanting to come out of the fucking game, <laughs> just bring be a different pitcher. Knuck. Just be a different pitcher. Yes, bring a different guy. All right, now it was a knuckleball nasty, pitcher. It, it was nasty. gross. Uh, I mean, you could tell because the catcher was having a tough time. You know, he was chasing it. Yeah. Uh, but get into you real quick. I uh, I know there's a lot of baseball going on, or at least uh, playoff stuff, but how did your season for you feel like went? Because it's so different. I don't know if people realize the type of schedule you guys play. Like six games. Monday's off. Monday's off, but you're playing the same team for six days. Correct. Correct. So, I mean, it's a, it's a little bit different schedule now than it was, I mean, my first few years in AAA. But, yeah, we will go on, like, You'll be at home for a week against whoever, OKC, six games. Um, as a starting pitcher, you got Tuesday, Sunday. So you're starting against the same team twice in that same week. Most relievers are throwing three times in that same week against the same team, unless you're a guy that throws two innings or two plus, and you'll probably throw twice. Um, but, yeah, it's a little bit different schedule. And then you go on the road, and it's the same thing. The one thing I, I love is that the travel's so easy. Right. Um, obviously, we were in Tacoma. The closest team to us is SAC and or Reno. We fly everywhere. So we don't bust any trips. Um, kind of a pain in the butt because every Monday is our travel day. I mean, I, but I assume that, that, I mean, they do that for that reason, the cost effectiveness of it. Kind of. And, and it used to be, so I was in Sacramento in 2014, and there were some teams that were closer to us, Fresno and Reno, you could bust to. But let's say you go to Albuquerque, then you would bust to El Paso and then fly back home. So it'd be a three game set in Albuquerque, bus overnight on Wednesday night or two Thursday, Thursday night, whatever it is, play Friday, Saturday, Sunday in El Paso and then fly home. As in now, we just it's one week at a time. And if you're in Round Rock or OKC, El Paso, some of those teams you could bus and you're busing Tuesday morning, um, which is it sucks, but at the same time you're able to get that full off day, which I think I, I was there for from May eighteenth until September twenty sixth or whatever the season ended. September 24th, and I had two off days. We had two true off days. Everything else was we're traveling. Most of the time, we're bus, our flights are at noon. So we got a, whatever, 9.30, 9 o'clock, we're leaving from the stadium to the airport. We're getting in at 4 or 5 in the afternoon. We get to the hotel at 6. Your whole day's shot. Um, so, I mean, that side of the travel sucks, but it's way better than it used to be, that's for sure. I think it, it, it definitely reaps the benefit of, of being in that city for a week. I like get my suitcase, unloading it, putting it in the drawers. You're actually you're living in that hotel for a week as opposed to just out of the out of your yeah. suitcase the whole time, three right. days at a time. And I mean, even like lower level minor leagues, we were low A, high A, double A pro. Some of those travels were tough. They sucked. You know, eight hours every Thursday night was not that's not the business. That's for a game. <laughs> yeah, no. Um how were you used this year? Would you was it kind of this because I know you were a starter for a minute last year, but I don't know if that was an indie ball. Yeah, uh, so a little bit different. I I started most of the year this year, um, so I came out. Of, I went to indie ball. I went to Gastonia again, and I just didn't want to go to Mexico. I didn't have a job in coming out of camp, so I went and played an indie ball for three weeks. Um, I think season started end of April. I signed on May eighteenth, so I think I had three or four starts, and I signed with the Mariners was a starter for the first six starts. And then they wanted me to be like the bolt guy on the back end of a piggyback. We had a lefty that was throwing really well. They wanted to build his his innings up, his pitch count up. He was throwing like 35 to 40 pitches at a time, Eric Stout. Um, and so he would start and I would come in on the back end of him and we would just try to get, we'd get to the seventh inning was pretty much our goal. I did that three times, went to the all-star break and then came back and started again. And I think I only had about, eight starts on the back half of the year. Um, but I was like off and on the developmental list, pretty much like the Phantom IL. So we had, we, from the all-star break, we picked up seven, seven pitchers pretty much. Um, either DFA claims, waivers, 
traded for. Um, so it was kind of like I was I was the odd man out, obviously being older, coming out of indie ball. We had some guys that were 25, 26, 27 years old. Um, but, I mean, I had a great time. It was kind of being a little bit more of a mentor, talking to younger kids, um, and just trying to keep the keep the same attitude, keep working out, keep – and whenever I was ready to pitch or whenever I got the name called, I got to pitch. It was fun. You were with Tacoma, right? So Kirby – was I got? I mean, listen. I know there's stuff that stays in the locker room. I don't know if you can share if there was any conversations within the clubhouse, considering you know you guys are one step away from yeah, we're the big phone leagues. Call, phone call away. There's a lot of guys that were in the clubhouse in my clubhouse that were there when it happened. I mean, at the end of the day, he. The only thing I personally didn't like was his apology because it wasn't true. He wasn't. He he li- literally listened to whatever the media guy said and said that. If I understand what he's saying, but you can't say it, like you can't say at ninety pitches, I'm done. You know, we had the, we had the same situation. We had one of our pitchers that was just a horse for us. He was throwing six, seven innings every start, and he'd go out there and it would be ninety five plus pitches every single outing. It doesn't matter if we were losing eight to two or we were winning, you know, six zero. He was going back out there. And I think Kirby kind of felt at that point that he was just getting ran out there when we had fresh arms in the bullpen. It's kind of, and I've, I've felt that way before, but you can't mention it. And because then people, not only people, the fans, but your teammates don't think you're accountable. And I think once, and it's a learning lesson for him. And I think he's 25 or 26 years old. He's not very old. He's got a little bit of two years in the big leagues, three years in the big leagues. Um, I think he's going to learn from it. I think he's going to be a horse. He's got unbelievable stuff. He's 95, 97, that last inning of the game, that that day also. Um, but, you know, I think as long as he personally learns from it and says, all right, I'm going to be a, I'm going to be the dog that the team needs, like Gilbert is, like Castillo is, I think they're going to be that team and that organization, that starting staff is, bro, they're so good, so good. Do you think that's part – no, I don't want to. I don't want to blame or or. He's the one that said it, right? Like, he said it. But in, in do you think the way interview. they run this stuff now, guys have begun to feel like this is my own. This is my job. My job is to get to here. My job is instead to finish of, the lineup twice. And I felt that way. You know, going through the going through some starts, I'm like, all right, if I get through the lineup twice, that's 18 batters. I need 15 outs. If I do that, I did my job. As opposed to saying, and then to be shocked though that you did that, and it's like, oh, I'm still in. Yes. And, and I'm saying like it's a different mindset. Whose whose fault is maybe that that we put I, that mindset on them? In my opinion, it's the way we grew up. It's it's how we've. You don't from, think like in an organization? I'm and I'm just not not just one organization as much as baseball itself. In my opinion, because is that more of a personal like thing he's got to deal with, or you know, like the organization expects this from me. I did that, and then I still got to go work. I mean. I don't want to say it's not one organization. It's all it's it's MLB. It's baseball itself. Honestly, it's it ultimately the mentalities. Yeah, it's it's broad. a full yeah. it sucks. And and in my opinion, if you want to be the ace, like he's looking at it as being a number three, or number four, a uh, number three, number four. Your job is to throw five innings. If you throw six, great job. But if you want to be a one, you go out there for the seventh. Well, you, you turn your eighth. back to your pitching coach. Like yeah. that dude was a dude from the Giants that like Kapler yeah. had to go get. Yeah. Like he, yeah. He turned his back to the, like, I'm not giving you the ball, you know? And, and that just proves that he wants it. Um, you know, one of the best things I ever got told when I was with Cora was keep wanting the ball, keep pitching. We will take it from you. You know, if that's three outs or if that's 12 outs, you know, most relievers are going to be in there for one inning. And I got caught one day in 2018. I threw, I finished an inning, and I thought I was out. I checked out in between the eighth and the ninth inning. I go out there for the ninth, and I didn't think I was going back out there. I went walk, double, walk, and single. Didn't record an out. Kimbrell had to come in, save me, and he ended up getting the save against the Yankees. And from that day on, it was like, how do you mentally? And did I tell people, oh, I thought I shouldn't have been out there in the ninth inning? No. Right, you're getting to pitch in a big league game. You 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 got to suck it up. You got to be ready to go. But m- once you mentally check out, and I think that's what happened to him. He finished a six. He mentally checked out, and that's where he felt like I screwed up. I didn't feel like I should have been out there in the seventh. Now, as long as he learns from it, you know. But then again, in that game, I don't even know if they won or lost that game. To they tell lost. You the truth, right? Yeah. And 
they lost. The they were questioning that. That was the that, problem. Was yes. that he, they needed, he came, they needed he, him? He was, and here's the problem. The I, now I remember. Here's the biggest issue. The next day, Brandon Wu was supposed to start, and we all knew in the AAA. We all knew that he wasn't making that start. So they must have known that he wasn't making that start, which means they needed him to throw the seventh, the eighth inning. He Goals, probably could have thrown a hundred. Yeah. yeah, go into the game as deep as you can. I knew they were winning at the time. If it was three to zero, three to one, it was a close game. Um, but we, and that was one of the things that I thought about was when the, all that came out was we knew that the next day starter wasn't making the start. So you had Brandon Wu who was going to miss a start, and then it had Castillo the next day. And then you had, I think it was like an off day, like a day or two later. So the bullpen was going to get wore out there um, for a minute, right. especially if they run all nine innings. Um, and we weren't, they weren't calling somebody up. They were just going to miss a start for Wu, try to limit his innings, right? Patch, you have a young kid. Patch right? that day. Pa- yeah, patch it up. And, uh, you know, that's not. But see, and that's, that's, I guess, that's something that does, it shouldn't need to be said. It doesn't matter. Your job's to go pitch until we tell you. Yes. Not to, or until we come get you. And that was one of the best things Core ever told me. And from that day on, like, I mean, I had days that I threw three, three plus, and and that was one of the things. That, so, what would you tell a high school? Would you tell a high school kid, hey, like, when it's going bad, I, don't look to the dugout? No, not at all. Or right? when you're, don't get like if you look in the dugout as you being rattled. Yeah, you look to the dugout, or you look to the bullpen, like I need somebody to save me. You're asking for a life, you know, a, a freaking life rope. At the end of the day, and that's not what this game's about. You gotta, you gotta suck it up. You gotta get out there. And in my opinion, you need a mound visit. I like mound visits. How does a coach instill confidence in a kid at any age? It could be a guy in the big leagues. It could be a guy in middle school. How do you get a guy to build confidence at that time when things aren't going good? Um, and and as opposed to saying, "Hey, we need you to throw strikes. We need you to compete." No. We, this is what you do this very well. Let's go attack this way. Let's change our plan of attack. Let's go about it in a different way than what we've been doing. Cause we're not successful right now. Obviously if it is first pitch breaking ball, if it is, you know, getting a, not necessarily getting ahead, but getting ahead with the fastball, forcing them contact because most of the time guys get in trouble when it's two Oh, and then they got to throw it down the middle. And so I think a lot of that lays into the pitching coach or the manager at any level. It could be the little league level all the way up to the big leagues of how do you instill confidence into that pitcher so you don't got to make a pitching change. Well, and like you see guys run at the bullpen, does that have a mental effect on you as well? Like, oh, fuck. No, the worst thing ever, you know what I mean? Listen to the weight of ball smack against the wall in the fourth (laughs) inning. I mean, nothing drives me more crazy than that shit. It's you're throwing four innings. You haven't given up a hit in, you know, six, seven outs. And all of a sudden, you're at 55, 60 pitches, and they're throwing away the balls against the wall like you're getting your shit lit up. Um, like, we got to find a better way, personally, because, <laughs> golly. It, I mean, it's embarrassing out there. Because then you're like, all right, they're, they're definitely making phone calls. And I used to do way to balls when I was in the bullpen, too. And, and But there's other ways to – to get loose, you don't have to just start ripping, you know. So not only do you hear the bullpen getting up, like oh yeah, you, you know, don't see you, them sprinting you, you out. You see there. the bullpen getting up, and now and now, you, now could, you can hear it. Now you could hear it, and they're you know ra- rifling balls against the, the chain link fence or the pad out there, and there's two or three of them. Sounds like gunshots are going off out there. <laughs> um, you also got to see quite a bit. Uh, another uh, frequent guest of this podcast is Alec Gamboa. Yes, with OKC. What was it like watching him? This year, when he got up, you—I mean, you guys. I, what, I saw him three times. I three, got three him, different well, series. Two, two series. I got to see him pitch three, uh, three, three, maybe four times. He threw the ball really well for us, for them, I guess, against us. Um, his last one was a little bit tougher. Just you know, again, trying to find the zone, trying to be, ex, trying to be too cute with it and, and nibbling. But his first three outings, dude, guys were coming back and they had no chance. It was fastballs were up, changeups were down. He had a good breaking ball. He was throwing early, throwing late. Um, guys are guessing and his first series was the first week after first full week after the all-star break. Um, you went and saw him in Sacramento, yeah. right? Yeah. And, uh, it was that next week he came up to us and he was 95, 97. Um, and I think we kind of talked about him doing the stuff in November, December, January and doing his VLO program. I think it kind of got to the back end of that season where August is long, man. And he was 93 to 94, which is still a good fastball, especially for a left-handed guy. But 93, 94 with 18, 19 inches of vertical ride is a lot different than 95, 97 with 20, 22. Yeah. Um, but 
I, I like that he, he really he helped himself out a lot this year. You know, I think a lot of people were, especially in the Valley, thought that he should have got called up this year. Did he have a chance? 100%. You just he, you did he, want it for yeah, him. Yeah, you yeah. want it for him. I mean, he's played four or five years. Um, I'm not saying that he, he didn't deserve it. He did. He threw the ball well. They had a lot of, lot of injuries in that organization. Um, I was talking to somebody last night at the City game, and it was like, man, he's put himself in a position to do it again. You do it for six, eight weeks. You do it in big league camp. And now you do it in front of the big league manager. You do it in front of Dave Roberts. And now you're in a different situation. You know, obviously they're checking in on AAA guys and, and they're they're hearing what's going on. But hearing what's going on and Mark Pryor and Dave Roberts looking at it and seeing, all right, I like his attitude. I like the way he goes about his business. He could throw two plus. Um, that's to me, that's one of the best things I see. He out did of that him. a lot to shoot too. A lot, man. He they would throw on Tuesdays and Wednesdays yeah. and or Saturday, Sunday. And he was throwing twice a week at two plus. Um, and it was huge for their team. And that's one of the reasons why they won the PCL, honestly, is is on the back end. We we knocked out their starter, I don't even know, second inning. Gamboa comes in, he gets it to the fifth. And I'm like, golly. I think he walked one, gave up one hit, and three and a third. Yeah. And I'm like, I mean, oh, ended up being shit. a good ball game again. But no, his stuff was really good. He, uh, You could tell he... he he can rip it. He likes his heater, which is good. But, I mean, his changeup was probably probably his best pitch against us. We had a lot of right-handed – I mean, we had we had a good team. We had an old veteran team. Um, but, no, he threw the ball really well against us. Once we saw him for the fourth time, we kind of – were a, we were just more patient. We weren't chasing the heaters up, and that's what ultimately got him in that situation that day. Chad, hmm. <laughs> I got to go here real quick. Uh, last week, because I don't, I think this happened after we recorded. Uh, Bryce Harper got called out for what could be one of the worst check swing strike threes in the history of baseball uh, by the Angel Hernandez. Mm-hmm. And an article came out, I think, the next day or the day after, talking about how protected not just him but umpires are, and he's how he basically he's in Major League Baseball until he retires. As they're all protected by the the union, and I I kind of shocked by that, uh, just because, I mean, your guys is your my job's not protected. I'll tell performance you that. based, and <laughs> he at the regular season's end was uh, statistically, I think the they said the worst in the league this year. It has to be. Uh, have you ever had any run-ins? Did you ever? I've had him, but I've never. I mean, other than just being bad, no. I mean, I don't want any, like you know what you're getting, right? You know, exactly. be ready for an irritating long. You know what's going on. Like it's how his did, show? It's his show. Hundred percent, hundred percent, his show. What? Show, but you were talking about how like how minor leaguers go up, down, like yeah. Up. Well, I mean, it, I mean, and who? It doesn't even matter. Like I could bat four hundred with thirty homers and a hundred ribbies and get released. And I mean, it, it has nothing to do. It's just the plan of that organization. Um, you know, or you could bat 190 with 10 and uh, 250 strikeouts and still have a job. Like you never know as a baseball player. That's that's what's scary. But to have a umpire be that terrible um, for the last almost five years, it's been uh, at blown least, at, at least five least. years. But it's been like really out there. Well, now that it's they, been they worse probably for it. Yes, I mean, they have stats for them. Yeah, and we 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 follow the guy that posts their yes umpire stats. Good. Yeah, so. Um, and they've he's been in the eighties like a lot, and that's just unbelie- that's, unbelievably unbelievably bad. Happen. So I mean, it, the fact that he is cocky enough to be like, I'm I'm in the union, my job saved. I think they need to. Okay, your job, you're still an umpire. You're going down to the fall league or Arizona. You're going to be in rookie ball umpiring. <laughs> if you want a job, still you're going to be in rookie ball. So like, I but I don't see, know if it's MLB. That. Or, it's the umpires union. So they have a different union, obviously, than MLB or the the owners. What I did see is that he didn't umpire a whole lot of games this year. Really? I mean, you got to. I got to look at the stats. <laughs> but the ones he did. <laughs> but the ones he did, he knew he was there. Uh, he, yeah. What you think his percentage would be better, considering he didn't umpire yeah. a bunch of games? And and I don't know what the number was, but I know early in the season we were talking about it. Like he hasn't been out there, and it's not even like he hasn't been behind home plate. It's just like he hasn't been there. So I'd like to see the stats on it and see how many games he actually did umpire or if something was going on, personal, whatever it is. Health but wise. yeah, who knows? Um, I just think that their union's better than the players' union. Yeah, I mean, what the hell? And and I mean, I get it because nobody, no matter what they call, 
you know, ball or strike, somebody's going to be pissed off. That's just little league umpires all the way to the big leagues. I think they're all bad, but we're always biased, right? You want you want everything to be a ball if it's close. I want it to be a strike, obviously. Um, so no matter what you say, it's going to be you know, give or take. Um, but so I understand why they got to have a union, but I mean, I would like it. I mean, our AAA guys are measured like crazy, and and so their grades are coming out, and that's where. I think you in the big leagues they can do it. They could do it kind of like the the European like here's our worst league. umpire. You go down our best triple umpire. You go hundred percent like that 100%. kind of that kind of. And thing. it could be every quarter, every half, every month, whatever it is. And it's the same thing as in the big leagues. Like, and they're getting paid really good money. Mm-hmm. They're getting paid really good money to, to umpire baseball, which is they're honestly they're some of the best umpire. They are the best For umpires sure. in the world. These guys are like ninety eight percent calling balls that are a centimeter that. Evaldi's throwing 97 miles an hour cutting away and they're 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 97 percent on him now these guys that are in the 80s we can we can change it so, and i was fun this year we got the we got the uh the challenge thing in triple a and you would see how good and how bad some of these umpires are and once if they were close you can be like all right i i understand it it's a baller strike but there's some that middle middle and they're calling it a ball <laughs> and the catchers aren't catching it well or a ball that's you know two balls off the plate away and it's a strike and you're like how is this like you guys can't be that bad mm-hmm. that was a good pitch that's the one that's like the granky one where yeah. it, they showed it the other day it, exactly. he dotted it right down the middle middle, middle. and the umpire it was a walk ball four and he's approaching the umpire 100 because it was full count two out yeah mm-hmm. and he it was the end them. of the inning yeah it, it was dude it was easy strike granky three. actually acted pretty good did you hear what he what said the umpire was... did you see the video of him i didn't so he told he walked up to get a new I know ball he walked up yeah and he told the umpire i'm going from the windup because now there's a runner at third you have to tell them whether you're stretch or yeah. Wind oh up. yeah, yeah you so he's like you get it's all i was mad for two seconds and then you have to tell the umpires yeah you got to whether you're going you're declaring stretch or wind. that's all he said <laughs> I, you know i just that guy's he something just else it but i mean you're i like it i I don't, I don't understand. You want the best. For I the didn't game, mind right? the challenge thing, and because we had Gamboa during the All Star break, oh, so yeah. he talked about it a little bit. So I, I mean, I don't mind that. I don't. I don't see it coming to, coming to the big leagues because they, these umpires don't understand how small the zone is in AAA. It's, it's tiny. It's tiny. So they tinier change. than the big league. Um, big league zone. Not even close. Really Not even close. So it's easier to hit in AAA. I mean, whatever way you want to say it. I mean, I think. <laughs> I mean, well, I'm a well, hitter, so yeah, I, mean, I mean, yeah. are you saying? I mean, hitting is not easy, but not at all. So but when you see stats like strike that Gamboa had coming up to AAA, that's really impressive with how small the strike zone is. Yeah, but or like it's about, and you could look at his walk numbers. I bet they were up. They had to be. I would. I really want to see, and maybe I don't know how to do it. I'm not a computer person. Looking at walk numbers in 2019, 2021. And then 2023 in AAA. And I think you could only do it in the PCL. Um, but looking at how the strike zone has changed, I know last year we shrunk the zone um, walking into 2023 from 2022. Then the last three weeks of the season, they had to make the zone bigger. And so what the rule is, and I was talking to Ovi about this yesterday, it's the hollow of the knee to the top of your hip socket when on your back foot when you land in your stride, but the zone is eight inches deep of the front of home plate. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's the way the rule was distributed or you know sent to us. So from your knee to your hip, when you stride at at foot strike, it's so not even your belt. No, the belt. That's a ball. I mean, we, it used to be the numbers. That's what they, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that was Little League. Needed numbers. <laughs> yeah, that was Little League. Maybe that's why the numbers are. Because you're know, seeing different. balls at, I mean, that's crushable, and that's a ball. It's a ball. That's so, god damn, I wish you know. I made it farther. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much easier longer. to hit. And that's what, even I was talking to Fletcher, and Fletcher was like, I was like, what do you got on the zone? He's like, it is tiny. He's like, I just go up there, and I just take, take, take. It's 2-0. and oh. All right, I'll swing at this one. And I mean, it's I mean, he's got because it's that easy to fall behind the next guy if he For gets sure. on like you can't afford but to throw strikes you know and but even like look at the zone right here right i don't know who's hitting um that, but that, that looks like shin yeah it's like shin bot, to, it's like two two balls under the under the kneecap yeah. to above the belt and that's just and they don't understand 
Or no, right below wait, the belt. Well, wait till, he, wait till he strides. The, oh, wait till he strides. lands. Wait till he lands. Because he's standing up tall. Yeah. yeah it's now he's going to stride out. Look at where he's landing. That thing's above his belt. Yeah. Um. So that's where the strike zone is is small. There, and it won't go to the big leagues because it'll be you'll games will take four and a half five hours again. And that's why we had some three thirties, three forties. But we're walking. There's 14 walks in a game, seven on each side. Um, it's it takes way too long. But that's the what challenge part, though. It doesn't was seem fun. It doesn't seem to take that long. Yeah. No, that's the actual challenge is 20 quick. seconds. Yeah, yeah. Um, I like that. I like that. I challenge. do too. Uh, With I like, their strike, I like. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, they're calling stuff in between the chalk line and home plate, and ours. If it's not touching home plate, it's a ball. And I wasn't real mad about the width of the strike zone once I kind of got used to it. But it's the up and down. Like you, there's nothing available. Um, Was there any issues with the balls this year? No, not that I know of. Not that. Did you have any preference? Did they change out balls throughout no, the season? Not at all. Because no. I know. I think it was last year they they used three different balls. Yeah, used like three different yeah, types. I was of a it. part of all that. I did that last year, and it was they were trying to get some kind of a some kind of sticky substance that would that's universal, um, but it's never going to be. As good as it used to be. Sure. <laughs> uh, hey, we are in postseason. First, do you like this three, three uh, series, three game series for the for wild sure. card? Yeah, it needs to be a three game. Baseball is about series. It's not about one day, one game. Um, that's not the way the game's played. No, I love game's it. It's always too. about the three game set. And you know they're about making money. It's, it's got to be great for. I mean, just think about TV revenue just alone from adding potentially two games to the wild card. Yeah, um, two games plus times four. Right, times four. Yeah. And you had the two road teams win, two home teams win. The Rangers won game one over Tampa. Uh, the Twins won at home versus Toronto. Arizona won at Milwaukee. They actually had to come back um, and uh, and beat the Brewers. And then the Phillies won at home over the Marlins. Dude, no no Valley guys that I saw on any rosters. Loop was not on the roster in Minnesota. I didn't see uh, Connor on the roster in Philly. And the Dylan's on the 60-day DL with Atlanta. I don't know if anybody else was on any other squads. Not that I. Not so, that but I, know. I don't. Are they doing the the taxi type deal? So they're, yeah, they're still taxi squad. I I don't know if Connor. We were just talking. He's about forty this. man, and so is Luke. So I would man. assume they are close I would assume that or Luke's there. there. Um, You'd think with his postseason experience too, he'd be Luke? there at least. Yeah. No, Connor. Connor. Well, yeah. Both. Well, yeah, both of them. Well, and um, Loop. Yeah, yeah, he's he's gotten hot in the postseason. I did hear that Connor had a had a his first child. I think it's his first child. So. I mean, congratulations to yeah, that. Absolutely. I'm not sure when. I know that he I was talking to some guys at City. He's yesterday. very private. Yeah. yeah he, he is, is. man. He's hard to see, hard to talk to. Um, but I know that he came home for that. And I don't know if he's back in Philly or in Florida for the taxi squad. Um, I hope he is. That's and that's just a matter of your matchups, mm-hmm. you know. And if it's a lefty guy, whatever they need. Um, same thing with loop. Like if they got a lot of left handed pitching. Loop's going to be in the lineup. Yeah, he's going to make that. Um, he's going to make the roster if they advance. And um, he's probably there because so he's one of those guys that was. Yeah, so they're. But either, he's just not dressed in a uniform. Correct. He's got his just jacket on. Yeah. But he's in the dugout. And, or, I, would is, think, I would think. So they do. They, they've had two different situations. And most of the time, because they're, they're at, home, at home, yeah. Then they're in the dugout. If they're on the road, more times than not, they're in Florida or Arizona, wherever their spring training is. Um, that way they're able to get live ABs and mm-hmm. especially with instructs going on, um, things like that. They, they have facilities. Arizona working. Fall League. Arizona Fall League's going on. I haven't, t- I need to reach out. I, I, I just don't want to bother them, especially now in this time of the year, you know, like keep their focus there. I take that back. There is somebody from the Valley, uh, Corbin Burns, oh, yeah. uh, Bakersfield, Bakersfield Centennial High School. Uh, you threw last night? Threw last night. I, did he get the L? I think he did. He, it, they were up three zero and I saw that he gave up three homers and they like, Dude, the I one Corbin the Carroll. One, Carroll. How did? I'm I sorry. I don't know how. I don't know how he hits homers, but dude, he's got 450 juice. feet. Four, it was 443 at 112. He looks like one hand. 27. Yes. Yeah. Off his front foot. <laughs> ball was Get cr- the fuck out of my. That is <laughs> bullshit. That ball. Dude, is that kid's a juice. player yeah, though. And I will one. give. I got to give you nux on this. Bobby Wood Jr. is. I told you for real. Can play. But the Carroll. Can play. But 50 stolen bases, 25 bombs. Just wait. Wit's gonna get to Acuna's. You think so? He'll be a 40 70 guy. Do you think he's, he's got to get out of KC at some point? To, no. no. You want to know? I think he's going to be a career KC guy. The, well, bring him on. Good for him. I think I think he he likes the uh, George Brett. 
I think he 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 kind of, in my opinion, he embodies that and kind of he is that kind of that player. old school. He's he, KC dude, guy. Yeah, he's old school. Yeah. Um. Obviously, his dad played a little bit. He right, he's a stud. He's a, he's a good ball player. I think they're going to be good. Yeah. Like, I honestly can't believe that they didn't win eighty games this year. Yeah. Um, they they got a good team. They were they, they were, were really bad. And I don't know if I I don't I didn't watch a whole lot of baseball this year. Being on the West Coast, all the games are done when I'm done. That's one thing I do like about being on the East Coast. When I'm done with my game, I can watch all the West Coast teams. Um, but he, I don't know if it was pitching or if they had just had way too many young guys. But their AAA team last year in 22 was unbelievable. Their AAA team in 21 was good. So I don't know what their their big issue is. It could be just. The transition buying their time could be, yeah it could be young well transition Devel- to the big leagues you I mean, know but you developing got guys like, those guys too melendez is a good seems player. like what the giants kind of been doing like yeah. they didn't go spend the money let's see what we got in our farm system and and some guys get hit some guys stick and some guys don't yeah i mean i i do and it's hard when you get a guy that's batting 212 215 with an ops of 650 like what do you do with that do you do you kill her confidence and send him to triple a um i was a part of buxton in 2015 when he was up and down he would go up to the big leagues. He'd bat 097. And they bat him in the nine hole. And they, they were trying to change him. He'd come down to AAA. He lit off the first game, first pitch, hit a homer. And you're like, Buxton, you're batting 400 in AAA. You're batting 100 in, in the big leagues. What's the difference? And it, it's, you know, it's. It's, it's like he's not, not being able to play as his game. It's not playing his game. Right. And it's, dude, it's a different. It Does is that a happen a lot game. where they try to change? They're trying to change you well, to, they're trying to be to what they want you, you to be? They Right? You're trying to, just like you were well, saying. Well, that's like, what, dude, that's what happened to what, uh, what Selma. What piece of the pie, what right? piece of the pie do you, can you fit into? Like, we want to mold you into being a guy. Like, they're telling Buxton, this is obviously eight, nine years ago. Hey, we need you to take pitches. We want five pitches at bats. We need to, we need, your job is to drag the starter down, Right. As opposed to when he's in AAA, it's like, hey, ambush him. First yeah. heater you he's see, go. go get him. Go. Yeah. And right, and if he's hitting, he's going three for four, three for five every game, raking, mm-hmm. stealing bags. I mean, he he outplayed AAA baseball in 2015. It was unbelievable. And then, obviously, he, he did it two years later. He was a freaking platinum glove winner in center field. But it's... That is he out right now? I Who? think he's hurt. Yeah, because I was say he wasn't dressed out yesterday. Well, he wasn't playing center field. And no, he wasn't. You want to he know? had his jacket on. That uh, dugout. He, he, he it, must uh, be Taylor. Hurt. He's yeah. Taylor almost robbed a homer yeah. pretty much last night. Played well, had a hit that. too. Um, a big hit. So, but that's where guys that, that do they fit into the mold of what they're trying to do, and and it, it's not easy. You know, we had a guy, one of my buddies this year. He's very successful hitter. He's, he can hit. He gets to the big leagues, and they're trying to. We want you to do certain things. We want you to play a little different, and that's not the way they do it. Yeah, is yeah, that kind of the new? Because I mean, if you if you look back to the '90s and stuff, it was like Lofton was that leadoff slap, whatever he did it. But that was they, his game. Yeah, and they, they played, didn't mold played, him to that way. Yeah. That was his game. The line they let was him built do around, him. Built around everybody's you know, kind of strength. Tell me, was, tell me so he, was driving in runs, and you right, know, but done. he's batting one or batting nine, right? Um, you know, and it's it's different, even. We I was watching the Brewers last night, and the guy that can play when Triple A was Bryce Terang. He was my roommate in twenty two, and even last night, young kid never went to college, put laid down a sack bunt in the first inning. Next guy hits a homer. Second at bat goes out there and takes a long hard walk, with seven or eight pitch at bat against a hard lefty from the Diamondbacks. Guys like that, like he's gonna be a leadoff hitter, two hole guy. Like that's who his game is. But if, are they trying to fit him in the seven hole, I mean, in the I, five hole? For like, some guys, you, I just don't think you can do that. Some right? guys, it's like, this is who we are. This is who we got. This is what Well, let's does. be honest. How many hitters want to be changed when they're going good? Well, Or be, you know what I mean? Zero. Like, your well, game and, and your hot. you get to the big leagues is you're hitting good. You're batting yes. 375 for a reason. And you're seeing the ball well. Like and Buxton, hey, you're only seeing three to four pitches in a bat. Not, we want you to see eight. Yeah, that's not good Well, enough. no, I'm. I'm going to see if three I get four, a four, I'm going to bat 400. Yeah, if I get a fastball, I'm going to swing it, as opposed to them saying, hey, we need you to take, like, you got to grind off the sliders, and he he's not going to grind them off. He's swinging at them. Yeah. Um, I mean, we had a guy this year, <sighs> unbelievable hitter. Jake Shiner batted at, before the trade deadline, 285, 30 homers, 105 ribbies. Your kind of guy. Bro, unbelievable. OPS of, like, 970. It wasn't. I mean, he he punched out. Right? He probably had. 
he had a good amount he of still punch hit outs. 285 so but I, 280 punch, out, punch out all you want when you're hitting over 280 100 ribbies though like the impressive part was if there's a guy on second base and we wanted him up yeah right and to that you're not probably punching out a lot no no if you're hitting two, if you're hitting 285 exactly. you're not you're, you're not, not punching out much. i mean he had whatever it was you're not know, you're, sure. you're not schwarber batting 190 Correct. yeah with 47 and 110 he's still nasty i know for sure but, I, I could i could argue that that's one of my best no friends, i know best i know it's just hard to for sure it's hard well, to i mean you're a that. fan of his so. i like schwarber yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's I'm, what I'm saying. i've always liked schwarber but you get a guy like that and all it took was they were going to call him up they were supposed to trade make a trade he was going to get called up he went in a funk I mean, he was raking. He was batting 300 over the last three weeks. And then he gets in a mental funk, and now they, he thinks, you know, this, that, and the other. He goes like, oh, for two weeks. He finishes the season with like 30-plus. He ends up breaking his hand. He missed the last month. Um, but he still batted like – ended up going to like 258 with 110, 115-plus. But like it's that quick. It's that quick of a mental decision in this game that this thing will beat you down. And especially on the hitting side, mm -hmm. pitching side, you're in your own head, in my opinion, as in the hitting side, you are in your own head because you think they're doing something different. Um, and that's where this game is tough. And when you're hot and you're batting 370, 380, and you get your call up to the big leagues, I don't want to change. I want to keep doing – I wish I was going to the exact same ballpark because now you know it's it's a routine. Mm -hmm. And that's when you get into your routines and, and you talk about the hitting guys – your routine is what's setting you up for success later on that night, as opposed to like when everything changes and you got to do different things and they want you to do these three drills instead of whatever you've been doing. It's a different feel. And, uh, I think, I think that's what kind of happens. And I mean, you see it from year to year. There's guys that I've talked to that, I mean, there was a year that Xander Bogart, they wanted him to hit the ball in the air more. He was terrible that year. He batted like 245 with 20, the next year, he went back to what he was doing his whole career. He batted 295 with 25. You're like, that, that's who he is. He's going to be a really good shortstop. He's going to hit 290. And that just doesn't happen all the time in the big leagues right now. Uh -huh. they, they'd rather take the 240 with 45. Um, and that's just kind of the way the game the game goes. There's no double plays. That's They want, this, they want the punch out. Um, yeah. I saw a thing the other day, real quick. Tony Gwynn, he hasn't struck out so many times in the last 10 years. And I was looking at it, and they were like, yeah, he didn't hit that many homers either. No. You know, Schwarber, Schwarber's got 47 homers driving in 100-and-something RBIs, um, right? So, But that's the piece of the puzzle. He fits that piece, um, which crazy is. But, again, there was only two teams that offered him, right? There wasn't like all 30 teams were like, yeah, we really wanted him when he hit free agency. He thought he was going to make $200 million. He, I mean, in my opinion, he's worth it. Well, if he I bat thought, 250, he would have. I think so, too. Um, <laughs> and that's and, just 250. And, and, right? But at the same time, they're not telling him to get a single. No, no. Right? If there's nobody on, guess who's in scoring position? It's, al are. it's almost impressive that he <laughs> – no, I'm not even kidding. It's fucking impressive that – He could have more extra you base could, hits than singles? Well, you can almost be that bad of a hitter to be that good of a power hitter. Yeah. Like, that. that's – because it, it's not like Gallo where he's batting 100 – with 20 you know what i mean like he's one or two in the home runs every year and he's in the top five in rbis and he's the worst average like yeah. that's hard to do so <laughs> I'm, but I'm sorry. you think about like swing right and then i look at guys like rafi devers who swings just as hard but i i don't i couldn't even tell you what his numbers are i have no clue but i know the, like going over history he's gonna bat 275 280. he's consistently he's consistently he's pretty good hitter yeah. and yeah. he strikes out quite a bit but he's still going to hit 30-plus. He's still going to drive in over 110. And that's where I like guys like that. But that's why he got $300 million or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's literally the 1% of the one percenters. Um, but, yeah, dude, I, I still like Schwarber. He's Yeah, I like Schwarber. Everybody it's just that hard I've to, talked to. It's hard to look at. It's like, him. dude, just, just bat like 50 points higher and I'll be okay. <laughs> I'll be okay with it. But then again, I'll be okay with all it. right, do you want him to bat 50 points higher and not walk? Or is his walk ratio okay? Because what's know. his OPS? I don't know. Come on now. <laughs> I don't know. Come on now. His OPS is still pretty good. Yeah. We're batting I mean, 90. I, I mean, I guess I'd take 47 homers and 100. But I don't. He just, walks a shit ton. It's just so hard to walks a shit bat ton. under the Mendoza line. It, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> One of the plays that I don't. It got a little love last. Not a little. It got a pretty good amount of love. But it was uh, Longoria's play at third to double off i think it was like in the eighth or it was late in the game that would have changed a lot of momentum given the brewers the lead 
made a fantastic uh, diving catch to double, and then doubled off the runner in second. Which if Arizona moves on, like you're gonna go look back at that play and be like, dude, that might have saved the season. Considering we were just talking about last week, is he on that list of guys that could be on that tail end of yeah. cut end in his career? We don't know, yeah, but 15 years plus in the big leagues. Uh, yeah, dude, and a lot of success, man. Good player, uh, big fan. I always liked the, uh, always liked Longo. So uh, I actually saw Longo play when he was at Long Beach State when with I was that roster when, way back when. Yeah, that was way pretty, back when. That was a pretty good. Uh, Bring it ball. 2004, we went. Not bad we having Tulo and yeah. Longoria on the same side of the infield. And Weaver in the mound, right? And Worley. And way Chris, uh, very own Chris Jones was on that team too, right? Mm-hmm. But that's For Edison High School. Way back when, yeah. Uh, hey, I want to, listen, we'll, obviously we're only one day into the uh, the wild card stuff. Not a, not a lot of things went down, uh, but in the season, awards start to get voted on, um, MVP in particular. And we've talked about Otani winning MVP. Have we, though? We have. <laughs> we have. Uh, well, he's the front runner in the AL. Uh, just some deep, uh, just a little background. This is kind of a, a random baseball facts that I wanted to throw your guys with. A couple questions in here, maybe some stuff you didn't know. Uh, and for those listening, this is something you can go spout to all your friends and they don't know shit about baseball. Uh, the award began in 1911. It had a different name at the time. Uh, from 1922 to 1928 in the American League, and from 1924 to 1929 in the National League, an MVP award is a given to a baseball player of the greatest all-around service to its club. Prior winners during that era were not allowed to win it more than once. So this list could be could have been added to. And the reason why I say Otani, he was the last pitcher slash hitter, but the pitcher to win the MVP. Uh, in 2021, where he hit 257, 46 bombs, 100 ribs, 26 stolen bases, and his pitching numbers were nine and two, with a 3.18 ERA and 130 innings, with 156 Ks. Prior to him, Clayton Kershaw uh, was the only other was a pitcher to win MVP. Max Scherzer Wolf. getting some work. I was in. just getting a little pregame. Um, I got a chub. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the question is. How many pitchers? Oh, it was pregame. Never yeah, mind. that was pregame. Pregame. Yeah. How many? I pitchers? got excited. I thought yeah, he was dude, that's, that's oh, freaking. Ready to go. Yeah, dude. That's but just to see him throwing a bullpen. No means, shit. If they advance, I think he would be thrown. a fun teammate to have. I heard he's wild. Uh, uh, he seems wild. Like just like crazy as shit. I don't know. I like mean, he'd be a guy though that I if I, if I'm playing first for him, I'm like. I got to get him some run support because that motherfucker is going to motherfuck <laughs> me. He's going to let you know if, about if it. If yeah. there's a zero on the board. Yeah. Better not let a ball go down the line. That's for sure. <laughs> He's yelling at you. Uh, you better be covering for How <laughs> many uh, pitchers, and this is kind of a trick question. How many pitchers have won MVP? Do you have a multiple choice or we just got to guess a number? Just guess, uh, Between 20 and 30. How about that? Between 20 and 3. 20 and 30. Oh, between 20 and 30? There's been that many? In the history of baseball. I didn't think there was going to be that many. Honestly. I didn't think there was I was going with 24 was since that's my favorite number. I got no clue. I was going to guess way under that, like four of them. I was going to guess like 12, so, okay. to be honest. So the answer is there's been 26 times a pitcher has been awarded MVP. AL and or NL. NL yes. Okay. 24 actual players. So there's been one twice okay. uh, by two guys. So I was right. 24. So 24 it, whichever you know, take your pick. Uh, Eleven of those also won the Cy Young the same year. I hope uh, not hope so. all of them. That's crazy, yeah, right? Uh, three of those were closers. Do you want to name them? Any of those? Uh, three closers. They won the. They won the. They won MVP? the MVP. And I think all of them less with 80, 80 innings was the max, and then they were less than eighty innings pitched in the season. Golly, that's not a lot of innings. That had to be a Should long time ago. Was Walter well, Johnson less, a closer? Less than 80. I know. Less than 80 innings. Yeah, no, he was not. That, I threw the, a shit ton at 72. So Yeah, but starters went nine. MVPs. They were three closers. I know. That's why I, I guess. I <laughs> closers. Know. Yeah. I don't, three? I don't know. Uh, I would say K-Rod with the Angels no. way back when. MVPs, though. That yes. won an MVP award. No, nobody's won MVP that I know of from. Any of our eras. So Willie Hernandez was one. Yeah, who's that? Uh, Raleigh Fingers I've won heard. MVP. Okay. Yes. And Dennis Eckersley won an MVP that's, with 52 saves, I think, when he won it. 
who was he with that year? Oakland. Uh, Oakland? Oakland, I believe. Yeah, he started. He was a starter with the Indians back in the day. Uh, just yeah. some he, MVP. He no, no history. So, so you have twenty six times a pitcher has won the MVP. There's your AL MVP, by the way. That's Corey I Seager. Like. Thank you. I, I like I'm that. hey, I'm with you. I'm with you. No hate to Otani, by the way. Just I, I agree with I you. No, you finish the season. Player. Yeah. I'm with um, you. only one players won it back to back years. Uh, Hal Newhouser of Detroit won it in 1944 and 1945. That's a couple of years before me. Uh, twice the AL MVP and NL MVP were pitchers. It's happened twice. Uh, same 1924 year. In, the same year. in the same year. 1924, Walter Johnson and Dazzy Vance. And in 68, Denny McLean with Detroit and Bob Gibson with St. Louis. Uh, both in, I knew Bob Gibson won MVP. Uh, McLean that year in Detroit was uh, 31 and six with a 196 ERA and 330 innings pitched oh with 280 Ks. Well, Bob so Gibson, just to put that in only... perspective, Sale or, or Snell, I think, is leading with innings pitched with like 218, 230. Yeah. Am I? Um, and the average I think I've seen like when Robert Ray was like 220. If you two, throw 200 innings, you're a dog. You're a horse, man. Three hundred and thirty-six. That well, same year, Bob Gibson was twenty-two and nine with a one-one-two ERA in three hundred and four innings pitched with two sixty-eight. I just picks. read something the other day. He's the only pitcher in history to have three hundred innings, a sub-one-five ERA, and over two hundred and fifty strikeouts or something in a single season. Sounds about right. Uh, now, now. I bring up the Otani part of it and, and showing love to our pitchers here is what the Go point ahead. of this is. I was wondering why I was yeah. fucking not liking this. Uh, <laughs> pitchers that hit, the best pitchers that won MVP that also hit that season. So listen, it's not the first time that a pitcher's also hit and won an MVP. Now, did they do what Otani did? Offensively, no. no. But pitching-wise, they destroy him. Madison Bumgarner. So, and he didn't win an MVP. Don, Don Newcomb, uh, Brooklyn Dodgers. What year is this? Uh, this, I forget what year. I, sh- I had it written down, but I, I took it off. What, are we in the same century? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think it was in the 50s, I think. I'm not sure. Hit 234 with two bombs, 16 RBIs, uh, stole a base, but his pitching numbers 27 and 7, three, with a 3 ERA. Um, where did it go? 268 innings pitched with 139 Ks. That's not uh, oh, that's not a lot of Ks. Not no. a lot, no. That's, that's my kind of pitch, pitching right there. Um, no. I mean, 27-7 <laughs> with a w- three RA. That's pretty a lot good of ground for like balls. out one every two. Yeah, uh, every two the other two. one, again, this is going back, but listen, these Way numbers back. are... Well, you got it. Babe Ruth's got to be on there, right? Babe Ruth did not win an MVP. As a, Just because it he, wasn't... He won one MVP, but it was he didn't pitch that year in 23. Yeah. And it was his offensive numbers that won the MVP. Uh, Bucky Walters with Cincinnati in 1939... Hit 325 with a home run, 16 ribbies, and a stolen base. That I think he had a slider. I want to say he had a hundred. Who that just went play. yard? Garcia. Gar- yeah, Garcia. That guy yeah. can he, play. He can play. I like that. Texas kid. on the board in Tampa. Uh, I think he had 155 at bats this year. He hit 325. Uh, Bucky Walters. Pitching numbers were 27 and 11, 2.29 ERA with 319 innings pitched. 137 Ks. Um, pits are crazy because how many games did they play then? They 130? Would, 100, something 140? like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Because it used to be 141 right, right. or 142. Um, did you see he, he had 300 something innings with only 130 strikeouts? Yeah, I love that. Now you want to, you want to, uh, a lot of defense back in the day. Listen, the best pitcher, I think we, we, and listen, I, Otani, no, no doubt. And I, obviously the game's different. Dude, just imagine if Dontrell could do what he could do. Back in the, like if they Is let he him the same hit, opportunity, yes, dude. So, Dontre Willis could fucking mash. He played. He p- yes, and he was out of high school because he was a two way guy. Yeah, if he would have went to college, he would have played both. You brought up Walter Johnson, and yeah. to me, this might be out of all the pitchers that wasn't won, he the first guy to hit triple digits or something like that. Well, he was the first pitcher to win the MVP, uh, and he's one of those guys that won too. Uh, so because uh, in the video game, he's this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he winds up and fucking throws him and Hal, Hal Newhouser, the only multiple winners of the MVP as pitchers. Walter Johnson in 1913 with the Senators hit 261 with two bombs, 14 ribbies, two stolen bases. Okay, you ready? His pitching stats 36 and 7. Whoa. 1.14 ERA in 346 innings, 243 strikeouts. 
one season. That's an MVP season. Now, for his career, he had 20 or more wins in 10 consecutive seasons. 20 or more wins in 10 consecutive seasons. Of those uh, 10 consecutive seasons, seven of them were more than 25 wins. And in 21 seasons, he had at least one shutout every season. 110 career shutouts in 21 years. Is that a record? I don't know, but that's more than some guys have career wins. It's more than teams have in shutouts. <laughs> was that back when the hitters were swinging fucking tree? <laughs> well, listen, tree? there was there was less teams. I know. You know what I mean? Less travel. I mean, there was, did they have three starters? A like, lot of they, white guys playing. He's, no international he's guys. Forty plus games. Starting forty plus games. So that's, that's my just, question. Did they? So like, you get to some of these leagues. Let's say, I mean, there's some leagues when they're starting, they only play on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Like, is that what? We, I don't know. We got to look up some schedules. Here. But go, I mean, it was just, I was just goofing off. I'm like, holy, I see some of these stats and I'm like, good God. Pretty nuts. Yeah. 333. Hell yeah. I don't know how good uh, base, but still. No, I'm, that's, I mean, he's going out throwing 346 Three times pitched. a week and starting games, maybe three times a week. What I wanted to find is if he played defense on top of it. Like, the, that's, he hit. Well, they were they were only getting 150 at bats. So yeah, you're something playing, like that. So yeah. that's you're getting three at bats, four at bats every every start. Is what it what it seemed like. Wade Boggs. So I guess my my just trying to you know while Otani is a, an absolute freak, um, guys have done you know. Well, I like I like what you're saying with Dontrell though, because that's something we'll never be able. Mad to bum even see that's what. I mean, I always sing a mad bum. I mean, the guy got a pinch. He got pinch hit at bats multiple. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like, oh, they're putting in a pitcher. No, he's coming in to hit. <laughs> yeah, he's coming in. No, like, imagine him taking BP every day, DHing every day. Like, that fool probably would hit 40 homers. And it was the same way. He he threw lefty but hit righty. So yeah. it was the same thing, the opposite righty, of Otani. Yep. Right, so where he's not, like, oblique strains aren't, aren't necessarily a big thing for him. Um, dude. The only problem is I don't think Mad Bum would want to He just wants to do more bucks. work. Yeah. <laughs> Strip and rip, baby. Uh, now, do, now, going through that research and like looking at all that stuff, I came across something kind of interesting, uh, especially back in the day. A lot of these guys had some weird names, goofy names. And so I went through, uh, you got three sports to pick from. We'll, we'll close with this. Oh, shit. Well, what about the Ryder Cup? Oh, we can, we'll, we'll, close we'll close with that. The Ryder we'll Cup. close with that. We'll close with that. I forgot. Um, what sport did they play? I'm going to give you, I'm going to name a guy. Mm-hmm. He either played MLB, NFL, or the NBA. Just okay? those three. Okay. So just three. So it's not a, a mass, but those are your options. Okay. I got, I don't know. I got a handful here. Uh, the first name, uh, his name was Slim Love. Basketball. I'll have to go NFL. MLB. <clears throat> Washington that, Senators. It ni- seemed like a, a freaking center. 1913. Uh, the next one, Steve Stonebreaker. Football. MLB. Football. Good. Vikings. I mean, I'm guessing. I'm 100% <laughs> guess. Oh, that guy? Yeah, that guy. <laughs> I know. See, told you. Uh, Koi, Koi Bacon. <laughs> Koi Bacon. I got it. Basketball, NBA. Yeah. yeah, football. D lineman with uh, the Bengals. A couple other teams. One of these guys played. Koi, uh, this was. <laughs> I don't remember the years. I should have wrote the years down. <laughs> they didn't wear face masks. Not yet. all of them. Sure. Um, Otto Moore. Oh, that's football. No, baseball. Football. <laughs> just keep. Going. I just remember I'll Otto. Go NBA because you Otto were wrong on two. Of them. It was NBA. <laughs> Damn it! I remember hearing a name Otto for something. Uh, Tex Ritter. MLB. Yeah, sure. Basketball with the Knicks. Uh, Guy Bush. Baseball. That kind of name's a fucking it's pitcher. Be. <laughs> Baseball. <laughs> Pittsburgh Pirates. I want to say that was like in the 20s or 30s. I should have wrote the damn years down. Uh, Mutt Williams. Ooh. Oh, boy. We got problems. Texas going to break this open here? I like that he dove, though. Two outs. Yeah. You had to. You ha- Oh, we save. got him. Out. Save, no, he saved. dropped the ball. Sorry. Paredes. Sorry, we're, wa- we're, sh- we're watching the Rangers uh, raise. Was that Jung? Two nothing now? Jung with a, two nothing, a triple. Actually, Jung's goes down a as a triple. Ball, ball player, dude. Did you ball face player. his little brother at all? Oh, no. I thought I faced him. Yeah, you is probably it? faced him, but his little brother is uh, lefty. 
In Triple A? I don't know. I know he got drafted either last year or the year before, he's but he's probably been AAA moved up. Yeah. Oh, everybody is. Yeah, it's so much easier. I think next year will be my first year. I got to go. Next year will be the first year I play with guys that were born in the 2000s. <laughs> by the way, I play my shortstop this Still year. Fun facts. There yeah, we go. Like, he, he was born in 1999. I brought out my very first pair of cleats. That's a homer. A very first cleat that I wore in 2007 and 2008, the old school Clippers with the mess of Mariano Rivera's. Mm-hmm. And I, I ordered two pairs and I wore them on my last start. And my shortstop goes, I, like, shoe guy, shoe guy. I've never seen those in my life. And I was like, God, dang it. I was like, how old are you? I'm 23. I was like, so you were six, seven years old my first year? <laughs> I've never seen them. All right. I yeah. hope you never have anybody from this area who's like, dude, I could have dated your mom back in high school yeah. or something. Like, <laughs> Uh, yeah, Texas is now broken open for nothing. Wow. Rock. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you got it. We want to do more of these. Yeah. What do you M- got? Mutt Williams was the next one. Football. That's a good one. Mutt Williams. But, MLB. MLB. Yep. MLB. 1913 Senators. Uh, Jim Weatherwax. <laughs> Chad. That's Jim. Got to be a baseball player. Jim Weatherwax. He's waxing that. No, football. Football. For the Packers. That's not weather. <laughs> Weather, uh, baby doll Jacobson. That's a basketball player. <laughs> baby doll Jacobson. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, his, let's go that's, basketball. That's baseball. <laughs> uh, two more, two more, and we'll we'll get to the Ryder Cup. A uh, hot rod Hundley. Sounds Football. Like a, sounds like a baseball player. Pitcher. Football. It was basketball with the Lakers back in Good the day. Uh, last I one. I believe they still do that. By the way, the Cur- forearm <laughs> shiver. They did not learn anything. Curly. Isn't that how? What is it? the? Uh, the lefty freaking the oh broke his, his yeah broke yeah. his arm, same same, yeah. Chad Ryder, don't ever learn Ryder Cup. Let's see it. I'm I am first of all, the European team was unbelievable. Yeah, they, they were good. They I were mean, that ass, and just though. think they didn't even have the best Europeans like Cam Smith because they didn't take any live guys, which I which, think's bullshit. But that I that mean, at the same affected time, the I USA it was team. Cool, like well, like uh, like come on, you think it's cool. But the Americans fucking did not have the best players. Well, that's their fault. They got paid. Well, Kepka, Kepka was he the ma- only? Was he he the made only? it because he won a PGA event. Yeah. And, but that's where I'm like, I want to see DeChambeau. I want to see Dustin Johnson. You know, I want to see our Americans. Isn't Patrick Reed over there? There's a few. Yeah, guys. but I mean, I'm. I want to like, Shoffley was good. Um, I'm, I'm even cool with Justin is. Thomas and them because they play better in that environment yeah, than they they've do. played. They like the loud. Yeah. They like and those loud. So I was okay with Spieth and them, even though Spieth fucking sucked until Well, you're, until wearing, singles. And he's, you're sporting the hat today. Yeah, you know, but I was very impressed with the the European team. Um, I'm not a Rory fan just because of what's happened with everything going on, um, but he played great, and I just think he's, he's too cocky. Like, Tiger was never that way. Like, if you're going to be the face of – the golf like Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods was never. Oh, that, I'm like sorry. That. They had that little beef with the caddy after that. That was kind of sec- weird, dude. That, fuck off. That you, was. You're a crybaby, bro. You got. Uh, I don't know. I was actually on Rory's side. Nah, like, fuck I, that. no, I have to birdie putt. I have to make this putt to to, to st- push. To, yeah, to take away the point or whatever. So, um, what side are you on, bro? I'm on a good ass golf. I'm. Trust me, I want the USA to win, but the way 100%. they played, I've. You, you, how do you not? Well, he lost, right? Europe? He lost the match. Yeah, because he missed the putt. Yeah. Well, good for you. Well, it's not the caddy's fault. You fucking no. Missed. The caddy is in a way. You, no, it's golf, golf etiquette and golf. Bro, you they were giving that dude the business the whole round. Yeah, not the caddy. And and Rory wasn't giving him Who the does business. He, who's he caddying for? I know, but Rory he, wasn't giving him the business. Rory if, still has a job Rory, to do. If I did that and Rory came up and tried to motherfuck me, I would. I'd have reacted the Rory same. Rory just told him to step. Who's who are you though? You just got beat. Go Rory away. Rory McIlroy is who <laughs> he go, is. Go. Yeah, I know. I, I watched him choke in the Masters, and yeah, I'm not wow, a fan. Wow, damn! I I already said I'm not a fan of Rory. But I don't think I gonna, think you are. No, I. I, if you're putting, you want their <laughs> caddy all up in your. I shit, sure as hell am not going to cry about it after I miss the putt anyway. That's not why I missed. And if you blame that on why you missed, then how good are you? But that's where do you blame? Caddy do you blame? Player. Who do you blame for making a bad pitch? I mean, for me, that's me. Okay, but, but okay. Well, I'm just asking. Time, like, <laughs> just asking. In golf, the caddy and the, and the player are the same person. 
Does that make like it's like a it's like a married couple? Like you're one. You can't you can't act like that on the green, fucking yelling and waving your hat around, doing some dumb shit. You could be excited and be pumped up that your guy made the putt and be like, yeah, hell yeah, we made the putt, whoopty whoopty whoop. But you can't yell at the other player. To do that, just in golf, uh, did he? Now, yell? It, he was he was making his gesture oh, to the fans. No, but then Rory then they, just told him to back off, and then he stepped yelling. at Rory and fucking was talking shit to Rory. Yeah, he's yelling. Well, keep five your feet. mouth shut, yeah. <laughs> right? Keep you now. Know? If he and then he went back and like that was all fine and waving his hat. I don't like it, but that's that. I'm I like the game of golf a little bit too much now. But then when he walked back to Rory and started talking shit to him while he's trying to read his putt, that's where. To me, that's where the line was. Yeah. So who said something opinion, first, though? I don't give a shit. Because, that's where because I'm you're supposed to be a professional. And once Rory goes, hey, you need to back up, pretty much. You I, can yeah, go, but you here's can the deal. Every screen. day we go on here and we watch these guys throw their bats 30 fucking feet in the air. Oh, yeah. We Baseball. watch pitchers sword. No, 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 no. It's the same De- thing. No, it's in not. the moment. No, it's not. It's you different. can't celebrate a big putt to beat Rory McIlroy. But that's in the moment. That's not allowed it's in the golf. Different game. Nah. Yeah. Cantley did celebrate there. And he should have. And the caddy should have too. And given the finger to everybody in the crowd. <laughs> that, I was fine with that. Yeah. I was just like, he happened to walk have, in his line. You have to respect the game is still going on though. Correct. That's what I'm talking about. Now, if Rory, it was over and he was in his face, then he yeah, did, there's he, no they, reason it happened. For it. The, the, what they filmed happened getting into cars after that's, the round was that's over. That's later, later. That's what but, I'm talking about. No, what I'm yeah, talking I'm, about. Is that was what stupid. Was, Roy was still mad what are you, about it. What are you crying I'm, about? That's what I'm, that's yeah. what I'm and talking I'm not, about. I'm talking about what happened on the green. On okay. the green before yeah. Rory's No, I'm talking about in the video I saw was the clip of him crying outside. Getting into the cars. He can get over it. Yeah. That's why I meant. That's not why you missed the putt. No, no, no. He's chewing his ass as they're leaving the facility. But on the green is when you still got to be professional. Once once he misses that putt, you could talk all the shit you want, in my opinion. Yeah. But you still got to let him perform what his job is, which is still making sure. A putt. Even now, that, I don't care. It's Rory. Yeah. <laughs> I just don't like him, so that doesn't matter. He's not my favorite, but I still think he's one hell. Of he's a, a great golfer. One hell of a golfer. I just hate Dude, he hits the ball a mile. Golly. I just hate how he's very upfront about like in the full swing thing where he's talking shit about Mickelson, and it's like. Bro, dude, he, he laid play. the foundation yeah, exactly. for this. Him and Tiger Woods, like, don't freaking. If somebody's gonna come at you in that situation, well, and then for them to not. If come somebody's at the gonna, PGA. if somebody's gonna come to me and say, "Hey, you're gonna get paid even if you come in last place. We're gonna guarantee you four hundred million, and then you're only gonna play three days a week. You're gonna get to wear shorts. We're gonna play music. We're gonna have fun. We're gonna play teams, and you're guaranteed all that. And oh yeah, you could play in all the majors in the PGA. Who's gonna say no to that? I know Rory and some guys said no because they don't need the money. But exactly, they're already making. They've already made a hundred, hundred fifty million dollars, which is fine. Like, oh, well, Rory's in, in the PGA like yeah, board. Like yeah, he's, correct. Yeah, he's where, did, where was all the comments when PGA decided to join Live? And I don't. Yeah, that's where it was all quiet. The, where's was all quiet. the bullshit it's talk still, then? And I don't even know what's going on there. I I saw that during the season and the spotlight got sense. taken off them for a minute. Yeah. And, and put on Live, and they just didn't. Like and that's it. where I'm like, okay, if they're supposed to be together, why aren't DeChambeau just shot a 58 like three weeks ago. Like he's playing the hottest golf of his career right now. Why is he not playing for Team USA? Yeah. You know, and I heard something. He didn't even get called, you know. Really? To, yeah. So and that might have been a. But the, I guess. Predetermined. But I guess because there is, you know, you have to win a PJ event to be considered. So that's why Sam Her- Sam Barnes or whatever, fucking terrible. They even said it all week. He's the worst. Um, shot like uh approach shot or like he yeah. has the worst stats for it. stats for hitting the fairway and fairway to green green regulation or he's the ball striker he's the yeah. worst ball striker on the tour <laughs> but since he won an event he got put on the thing they they were saying that as they were putting them together because they were trying to say why is he with um shot not shoffley but scheffler yeah scheffler and um Stuff like that. And it's like, okay, well, let's, that makes a lot of sense. Especially the worst ball striker on the tour on Team USA. Like, I know Keegan Bradley was one that was being talked about. Yeah. He didn't make the team. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I would, I think 25, it's in New York. Maybe something. Yeah. Beth like, Page. Beth, Beth yeah. Page, that's man, right. That's right. Good Rich Warrior already said they're going to win. I it. did. I did. Bucket get to play list, maybe. First ever New Ryder York. Cup. I'll go walk in his Wooster line. Country Club. I got to play that course. Oh, that yeah. Fun. Way back. It was first year. It was like, yeah, you big leaguers in your. Right. It was fun. That was when I was in triple ball. 
What happens? Hey, a little golf for you on this episode of Hit or Die Pod. Marcus, I appreciate it, dude. Always fun having you here. Thanks. We'll see more of you, especially just keep coming with the playoffs. I know you're you're gonna be on vacation next week, but uh stick with us. We'll be back uh next week with more of the wild card stuff and get into the divisional round. Uh that is another episode of the Hit or Die Podcast. Hit or die.